Hi and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been quite a while. It's already mid-September and I'm just getting to my August reading wrap-up. So a couple of these books I actually read in September and I finished one last night. I was kind of on a dark romance binge this month and we're gonna start with something a little bit lighter. Something that I read when I was still in Berkeley and I'm just now getting to kind of talk about it. But the first book that I have is Things That We Hide, wait well, you no, know, Things We Hide From The Light by Lucy Score. And she was really, really thick. I honestly don't think it needed to be that thick because I feel like there was a lot that could have been cut out. But nevertheless, I got through it. it. Took me a minute, but I finally got through it. I gave this book three stars. I think it falls within the two to three star range just because it wasn't my favorite. And I actually preferred the first book in the series a lot more. This one um, was about the first guy's brother. So the first book was about Knox Morgan. This is about his brother, Nash Morgan, and he's a cop. Um, and I realized that I'm not a huge fan of cop romance. Um, there's just some stuff he did that kind of gave me the ick. So he had a bunch of red flags. First of all, he was too overprotective and it was to the point that our main female character couldn't even do her own job because he was like, oh, it's too dangerous. I'm like, it's her job, like let her do her job. That really bothered me. And then also, he is like a huge fan of honesty, so he kind of made it seem like all of her secrets were like supposed to be his knowledge. And I was like, let this girl have some mystery in her life, like she doesn't need to tell you everything that she does. So those are some things that kind of made me not like Nash that much. And then because of that, I wasn't a huge fan of the romance and it took me a long time to get through it because I really just did not like Nash at all. If you read the first book, you kind of need to read the first book to understand a little bit of what's going on in this book. But at the end of the first book, um, Nash gets shot while on duty. And since then, he's been having a lot of PTSD. This girl moves into town and she's an old friend of him and his brother. He's, she's actually his brother's ex-girlfriend, but now his brother's getting married. So like, that's not like a thing anymore, obviously and instantly there's attraction between them which was a little bit weird because if the attraction was that instant them like reconnecting then i'm just wondering like if he had always had a crush on her even when his brother was kind of like hooking up with her a few of the genres in this book small town romance cop romance ptsd um opposites attract also this book gets really spicy <sighs> not in the first half because He's kind of just like keeping his distance, but he definitely falls first. And then the rest, like a lot of spice. It was pretty good spice too. So that was probably the only thing that kept me interested in the book, like the romance part. But um, the plot, I think it was a little bit lacking. Um, yeah, for a book that has this much, this many pages, I felt like there wasn't much going on to be honest. Let's move on to the next book that I read. This is when I got into my dark romance era and it started with <sighs> Stephanie Borer. I was watching her dark romance readathon and I have like a love-hate relationship with dark romance. Like sometimes it's a little too much, but I can still read it. And then sometimes it is just a complete miss and I absolutely hate it. The book that I chose was probably the best dark romance that I have ever read in my entire life. It was so, so good. And this was the Dark Verse series by Rue Nix, and that's a pen name. So the first book is The Predator. I also read all of this on my Kindle, so I don't have like hardcover copies. The first book is The Predator, then it's The Reaper, The Emperor, The Finisher, and the Annihilator. And then the next book is coming out. It's called The Syndicator. I couldn't find a date for when it was gonna be released, but I know it's gonna be the biggest of all the books and it's gonna have the pops from every single character from those books that I just previously mentioned. So it's gonna be pretty hefty and it's kind of like 
the final pieces to what has been building up throughout the entire series. So these five books follow four couples. So the first two books follow one couple. Um, I thought that the first two books were gonna be my favorite. Like that couple, I was like, wow, there's nothing better. I love this couple so much. Then I read the third book, which is The Emperor. And I was in love with the characters. Dante is like the golden retriever of the mafia. The first book and the second book are enemies to lovers, kind of black widow trope in the beginning. Um, the female MC is a genius and she uses that to help um, the mafia. And she's also a mafia princess. And then book three is childhood friends to lovers. Um, also just like PTSD, some really traumatic stuff happened in this book. Um, book four was past lovers and memory loss. And then book five is obsession and I put dark hero because he's kind of like the anti-hero where he's a bad guy, but he's the kind of bad guy that kills other bad guys, so we like him. And that's basically like all the guys in the book are kind of like that, where they're like, they help innocent people, but they kill bad guys. It was very much like Haunting Adeline, especially book five. That one was very, very similar to Haunting Adeline, except much better. So I definitely recommend this series to anyone who loves dark romance, but doesn't like to have something that's too dark where you can almost like not even finish the book. Like this is just perfect. Also, the spice was amazing. Really, really good top tier. The next book that I read was on my TBR for a long time. And because I'm in this dark, like dark romance era, I really have just been looking for dark romance books that kind of gave me the same feels as the Dark Burst series, but I haven't really been able to find anything like that. But I found this one on my TBR and I picked it up. And this is Promise, Promises and Pomegranates by Sav R. Miller. Guys, I love the artwork on this book, but I did not like the artwork on the inside of the book. And when I say artwork, I mean I did not like the plot and writing of this book. Like, uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. It was mostly spice, and that's okay, but I like a little bit of plot with my spice. So, this is Mafia again. This one has a huge age gap. Like, it's a 14 year age gap, and I don't know how I felt about that especially because the main male character actually had a relationship with her mother and then i was like no like this is just not it for me so i finished the book because i kind of wanted some answers and you don't get any answers and there's a second book but i don't think that i'm going to read it um but basically you don't really get a lot of information on his involvement with the mafia like there's not there's nothing saying like what he did for the mafia or how he got involved because he's a doctor um they call him dr death but i don't know why because like there's no backstory or anything and then i was left with a lot of questions and they're probably going to be answered in the next book but i just don't think that i am really that interested in reading the next book um also he was not abusive to her but he was abusive to her mother and I don't really I didn't really like that kind of like I hate misogyny and like abuse like that and like domestic violence like I, I can't read that like I hate that so much um also I did mention we don't really learn anything about the plot of the book or like what's going on at all every time she asks him a question he just distracts her with like sex and so then I was like okay like that's basically every single page of the book is that and there's like nothing uncovered or revealed about anything i was left so confused i don't know what the plot about this of this book was at all so um even though this is a hades and persephone retelling i was not a huge fan even though i love greek retellings like they're one of my favorite types of tropes and this was just not my favorite um, if you do want something just like raunchy and just like a guilty pleasure, like you can read this book. But let me tell you, there is no plot whatsoever. So the next series that I read was a highly recommended book. I saw it everywhere. 
that was the mindfuck series by st abby um and i found out that they also go by cm owens and i did read a book by cm owens a long time ago and i just found out that she actually died um so i was very shocked by that because I just remember reading books by her a long time ago and then I just read this book and I was like wow that's the same person I just was so shocked to hear that she died um, and apparently it was due to an illness but I do highly recommend reading this book if you haven't if you haven't yet um, this is the mindfuck series it goes it starts with the risk sidetracked scarlet angel all the lies and then paint it all red and they're all very short books less than 200 pages so you finish them like this and they all end with cliffhangers except for the fifth book and the fifth book ended the way it ended i was not shocked but i was like wow so it's a serial killer romance with an fbi detective she is getting revenge on all of the men that have wronged her in the past and let me tell you they did deserve it they deserved it 10 times over at first when i heard about this book i was like oh, am i really gonna romanticize a serial killer and then i read the book i found out like what was going on i'm like yes yes we are they deserve to die she deserves her revenge and she was such a badass when you read a book you have to kind of suspend reality a little bit because if you don't, then you're never going to get to read a book because like there's just so much ridiculous stuff that happens that you just have to be like, okay, fine, yeah, whatever. And sometimes it kind of crosses a line where you're just like, that's a little too unrealistic, especially if it's not a fantasy book. So in this book, she gets really, really good at martial arts. Like she has multiple black belts. She's taking down men way bigger than her. And I'm like, it's just so unrealistic. And then at the same time, her friend who is helping her with you know the more tech stuff he became a really good hacker like he just started taking classes and then somehow learned how like how to hack the fbi that was so unrealistic to me i'm like nobody could become that good but you know what it was for the story it was for the plot and i was like yep that that's realistic that that happened okay so one thing i didn't really like about the book was the way that the two main characters met i thought it was a little bit too domestic and their relationship throughout the series was a little bit too normal i mean besides the fact that she's a serial killer like dating an fbi agent like they just seemed like a normal couple and i think it would have been a little bit more enticing if she had been a bit more unhinged and kind of had like a more of an obsession with him um i thought that would have been pretty a pretty cool change so the last book that I'm going to talk about is Gothicana, which I literally finished last night at two in the morning. And I it was I finished it in five hours. It was a very good book. Paranormal romance, gothic romance. It's also by Rue Nix, and it takes place in the same universe as the Dark Verse series. I think that having both this paranormal romance and that mafia romance take place in the same universe kind of ruined it a little bit for me i just couldn't imagine a world where both things existed and i kind of wish that they had you know like lived in separate realities not that the books or the characters meet or merge but the same city that the mafia romance takes place in is mentioned in this book so that's why i think that they are like the same universe but honestly she could have just reused the same city but i highly doubt that so the book follows a girl named corvina she's kind of in touch with the paranormal even though she doesn't fully come out and say that she does hear voices and her both of her parents were schizophrenic so she thinks she's crazy and she even got tested um to make sure she wasn't insane so she goes to university and it's in a castle that is rumored to be haunted there she meets some friends and then some people start like dying apparently people go missing every five years during the full moon while she's there she learns a little bit about the past of the school and some rumors and i guess some tales that people kind of spread about what has happened at the university and in the woods 
and some people don't think it's real some people do then she meets her professor and there's instantly a connection they try to stay away from each other but obviously that's not going to work out they both end up starting a romance and there's a very small age gap because he was a student that kind of stepped up as a professor he's finishing up his thesis so she's 21 and he's 28 so there's like a seven year age gap which is like normal student teacher relationships are not supposed to happen so they kind of keep it on the down low i thought it was kind of funny that the black ball that everybody had been waiting for everyone gets dressed up and like apparently the school makes the dresses for the students and then they all go to this black ball and it literally was a student orgy and i was like how can the school be hosting a student orgy like what is going on so you know that i really had to suspend reality for that part of the book it's like i don't know what the hell is happening but what the heck and then of course somebody goes missing but then they're found so a prequel is supposed to be coming out i think it comes out in a couple days on the 27th so i'm gonna be the first to buy that one it's called arcana this book is very creepy it's a perfect book to read for fall i literally finished it in five hours because i was just so entranced and it is very very spicy so if you like student teacher romance and you don't like large age gaps and you like spice this is a really good book to read i highly recommend rue nix is probably one of my favorite authors right now my favorite dark romance author at the very least because everything that they have written has been like a four stars in my book it's just so so good so thank you for watching my august and part of september reads I hope you guys enjoy and get a few recommendations. These books are perfect for the fall because they're dark romance, gothic romance, we got paranormal romance, mafia romance. Love it so much. Bye.